Good morning, everybody. My name is Shiraz Subramanian. I'm a cardiologist in uh, practicing in Minnesota. And I want to take this opportunity to thank the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to speak at this uh, webinar. The topic I'm talking covering today is Watchman device, how to watch this. Basically the role of transesophageal echocardiogram in the evaluation and, and deployment of Watchman device. I have no disclosures. Uh, atrial fibrillation is a leading cause of uh, stroke uh, in adult population. Atrial fibrillation leads to the stasis in the left atrial appendage, which increases the risk of thrombus formation and the risk of stroke. Majority of the stroke caused by thrombus in the setting of atrial fibrillation originates from the left atrial left, left appendage. As a alternative to anticoagulation therapy for reducing stroke risk in atrial fibrillation, there are multiple devices which have been employed in the practice today for reducing stroke risk in patients with atrial fibrillation. One of the most uh, majority commonly used devices is the Watchman left atrial appendage closure device, uh, which is in practice for many years now. The device itself is made of nitinol frame, which radially expands to maintain its position within the appendage. It has 10 fixation anchors which engage the left atrial appendage tissue for stability and retention. It is made of polyethylene membrane, which is designed to block any emboli from exiting the appendage. The Watchman devices comes in different sizes, ranging from 21 millimeters to 33 millimeters. Uh, it is, has a compression diameter, which is around 20% less than the device diameter. The Watchman device uh, placement is a one-time procedure. This is done and does not have to be replaced. This is performed either in the cardiac lab or the EP lab. This is done by a transfemoral axis through which a catheter is advanced into the left atrial appendage via the femoral vein through a septal puncture. This does not need any open heart surgery. This is done with both the guidance of fluoroscopy and the transsexual echocardiogram. Generally and typically general anesthesia is used, but more and more these days we are using moderate sedation. It is typically one to two hour procedure, but with experience, this time can be below one hour. If the usual stay in the hospital post procedure is one to two days, but it's more and more one day right now. I practice in a facility where we do more than 200 watchman device placement a year. And typically more and more we are using um, moderate sedation and we are discharging patients within one day post procedure. The procedure itself takes place by the interceptal puncture, which is used by a standard transceptal access system. As I said before, the procedure is performed both by a combination of fluoroscopy and TE guidance. Once the transceptal puncture is done, the access sheet is advanced into the, over the guide wire into the left atrium, and it is pushed to the distal portion within the lumen of the left atrial appendage over a pigtail catheter. Once it is reached the left atrial appendage, the device itself is deployed. The deploying of the procedure within the appendage has four steps as an acronym of PASS, which include properly positioning the device within the appendage, making sure that the tug test so that there is no device embolization. Also post placement, you also have to measure how much compression is of the device within the appendage so that there is very uh, limited chance of device movement. And once also it is placed, we also have to check, make sure there is no leak around the device. Once the Watchman device is placed, a repeat imaging is done within 45 days, where we confirm that the heart tissue grows over the Watchman implant and the left atrial appendage is permanently sealed after 45 days. So the TEE plays a major role from starting uh, part of the Watchman device uh, play, uh, sel patient selection to also post-procedure assessment. The pre-procedure involves patient selection, measurement of the left atrial appendage so that the right device is selected. Also, TE is extensively used during device placement itself and also for post-placement assessment. More and more, 
CT scan is used for the pre and the post uh, procedure assessment, thereby reducing uh, invasive procedure in patients. Just to brush up about the anatomy of left appendage, which is a very complex structure. The, uh, the uh, left appendage actually has a lumen. It has a neck and a body and the lobes and the apex. And everybody is unique. There are different types and shapes of the left appendage, which in, in common practice is comes on one of these categories at a windsock, a chicken wing, a cactus, or a cauliflower, or a broccoli, which has a broad base uh, uh, in the apex of the appendage. So TE is used for both baseline uh, pre-procedure assessment of appendage, and also uh, at the beginning of the watchman device implantation. So the T images are done in precisely four angles at zero degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 135 degrees, in which you measure both the depth of the uh, appendage and also the neck of the appendage. Here you can see it, it is done at close to zero degrees here, and it is done at 45 degrees, at 90 degrees, and at 135 degrees. So not only this has to be assessed, uh, also to assess is the shape and, and the any structural integrity of the internal appendage sept, interatal septum for any other structural abnormalities within the heart, which could be challenging during the procedure, such as pacemakers in the right side of the heart. Once you assess the pre-procedure uh, T images and all the measurements are done, then you select the type and size of the, uh, the watchman device which you want to employ. Also, these are the same images you want to do at baseline on the day of the procedure. So when you start the procedure, before even getting access, you want to make sure there is no thrombus within the appendage. If that's there, there's a contraindication and the procedure should not proceed. Also make sure there's no pericardial effusion at baseline because that's something you want to compare at the end of the procedure. And redo all the measurements which you're done pre-procedure to confirm that you have the right device for the procedure. These measurements can now also be done in using a 3D TEE, where you get a biplane images of the appendage. This is at 90 degree and uh, 45 degree and 135 degree. And you get a 3D image of the appendage and you can get cross section in multiple views. This has been a great use for pay for doctors to reduce time and also look at the appendage in a very holistic way. The next important step in the procedure where TE is used is the transeptal puncture. So here you get a bi biplane view where it's a standard bicaval view of the intraatal septum where you see the SVC right atrium and the intraatal septum. And when you biplane that, you get a short axis view of the same thing where anteriorly you see the aorta valve. So this is done to actually pick the right position in the intraatal septum to do the septal puncture. If you see on the right side, which is 3D of the interior septum, looking from the right atrium, the one end circle is a fossa ovalis. So you want to pick inferior and posterior to the fossa ovalis for the ideal spot for doing the interior puncture. So as you see this diagram, this is the interior fossa ovalis. You want to go posterior and inferior to the interior septum, fossa ovalis for the ideal spot for septal puncture. So once you do the septal puncture, 3D TEE helps to orient the guide wire towards the left atrial appendage. This is kind of a surgeon's view of the left uh, mitral valve, where you're looking from top of the left atrium into the mitral valve. You see the aortic valve and the interior septum in the bottom half of the picture, where you see a septal puncture coming through this wire directed towards the left atrial appendage. I mentioned that fluoroscopy is used in combination with the TE images, and some of the TE views are equivalent to the fluoroscopic images. So a 45 degree TE view of the left appendage is almost like a RAO cranial view. As you can see, if you do an anti-clockwise of the ET view, it kind of re resembles the RAO cranial. And similarly, a 135 view looks like a RAO caudal. So these are complementary 
So the operator sees these both on their screen. So the TE and the fluoroscopic uh, views are complemented to each other. So coming to the intra procedure, once you got the access, once you've done the measurements, once you've done the transeptal uh, puncture, so this is a case we just did like two weeks ago on a patient who had the Watchman device placement. So this is a 3D of the left atal appendages. What you see as a dot in the middle is the guide wire after the transeptal puncture is done, which is advanced into the left atal appendage. And the same thing with the, the pigtail catheter deep inside the lumen of the left atal appendage. So same thing, we have made biplane views and we have made 3D views. These have been very transformative in, in actually doing the procedures. And we use this very, very uh, extensively in Watchman device. And you can see the mitral valve in the bottom. So this is how you can see deployed. See on the left upper hand screen, you see the Watchman de device being deployed. And you can see on the 3D as if you see like an umbrella being open and the light within the lumen of the appendages goes dark saying that the appendage uh, the device has been deployed. Once we deployed it, we look for color around the device to see for any leak. As you can see, it looks almost like a crown. We also inject some contrast to see whether there is any passing of contrast within the body of the appendage to see any leak. And we do not see that in this case. Once that is deployed, at this time, we remeasure the device to see whether there's actual compression of the device. We want at least one 20% reduction in the size. So if we, if we use 31 millimeters, as we got 2.5, that's almost 20% compression. So we again do it at zero degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and 135 degrees. We also look at color Doppler images of these sites to make sure there's no leak around the device into the body of the appendage. So when you do a tug test and the, the catheter is released, deploying the device into the left atal appendage. Here you can see from in the left atal cavity, this is the mitral valve, the left atal appendage device, watchman device is nicely placed within the body of the appendage. At the end of the procedures, once the catheters are drawn, one of the common uh, consequence of this is a Intraatrial shunt with a usually a left to right shunt because of the septal puncture. This has to be documented. Most of the time, this closes. If there's a large right to left shunt due to pressure changes, that needs to be percutaneously closed. So we look for this all the time. Other important post -compl immediate complication of procedure is mostly the pericardial effusion. This is because of a rupture of a chamber, a left atrium or right atrium. This happens two to 5%. It's closer to 2% than 5% as pay procedures are done by more experienced operators. So immediately after procedure is done, you should get images to make sure there's no pericardial effusion. You should not confuse the presence of pericardial fat to epicard for pericardial effusion. And that's why it's very important to get baseline images and compare your post images to the pre-procedure images. Very rarely you can also have device embolization and also procedure-related risk of stroke can happen in, in less than 1% of patients. One of the advances we see now is the use of 4D technology, which we are lucky to have in our institution. And as you can see, operated by the CEO of this uh, company, EcoPixel, where we use uh, hand maneuver and gestures to make motions of the uh, T images to move. So it helps the operator deploy and review the images more concisely. So we hardly use any fluoroscopic uh, images in these patients. We were the first institution uh, to use this technology in human, which we used for last one. This is my colleague, Dr. Jake Dutcher. This is our lab where we use the 40 pixel technology as he was uh, deploying a watchman device where you can move, maneuver and move the images um, on the monitor and thereby see whether the device is uh, uh, nicely placed. So we hardly use fluoroscopy images in, when we use this technology. So as if everything goes well, the patient goes home the next day on anticoagulation. We repeat the TE in 45 days to look for uh, a device placement, any leaks or thrombus formation. 
usually the tissue grows around the device as you can see almost like it looks like a cap on top of the device uh, after uh, 45 days the role for te at this time is to reassess device position stability look for any pericardial effusion whether it's new or it's residual presence of thrombus even though it's rare can happen even when on anticoagulation residual intraatrial shunt and very rarely device erosion and infections have been reported. More and more, we are doing CT scans now to look for these things rather than TE, but TE still has a major role in assessing for these instances uh, post watchman device placement. So to conclude, TE is a very vital in pre, intra and post procedure in watchman device uh, deployment. 3D TE is being used more and more as it has great advantage in improving procedure outcomes and reducing procedure time. Newer technology has been used, including 4D echo pixel, which gives us opportunity to, uh, to do improved patient care and do very precise medicine so that we have optimal and better uh, outcomes in this patient. I thank the committee again uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk. I'll be more than happy to answer any question. And this is my Twitter handle where I can be reached for any comments or questions. Thank you.